if you don't do your homework better, I'm going to fly off the handle. Where does that one come from? That one comes from the 1700s when manufacturing wasn't, uh, they didn't ha really have standards in making hand tools and ac specifically axes. Welcome to the Blue Lounge Podcast. Come spend some time in our idiocy and feel better about yourself. Let's get started. We're live for the first time. Welcome to the Blue Lounge Podcast. Yay. Guys. <laughs> Yay, Twitch. <laughs> Today we're going to talk about idioms. I don't okay. know. It's not this this stupid fucker right here. That's an idiom. <laughs> That's an idiom. Do you know what an idiom is? It is stuff you say that has other meanings. I don't fucking know the meaning of it. Right. It's a phrase that's not to be taken literally. You could use the words in a different context and mean a completely different thing. Most of them have an origin. Not all origins are largely understood. Did you do your homework? Very little. <clears throat> because you fucking don't. Because you're a bitch. Well, my preparation for the show is getting up and running my hands through my hair. Making sure that I don't look like I just got out of bed, even though I did. <laughs> this is for everybody to see. Dallas Stars. The 2024 how Stanley, likely Stanley Cup champions. Are they, how likely are they to be in the Stanley Cup? They have a really good shot. How many teams are they behind? They are number one in the West. No, they're number two in the West behind Winnipeg. They're number in one overall in the standings Central Division. of teams that will make it, what are they? They have like a 100% chance of making the playoffs. Unless they just... 100 seems unlikely happens. is all I'm saying. Unless a disaster happens. I feel like nothing's 100%. Knock on wood. Is You're just knocking on air. <laughs> knocking on air. <laughs> Did you look up the origin of that one? I guess that's knock a superstition. On that's a superstition. Yeah, I mean... <sighs> some of them I don't know what the differences would be. Like, gotta pee like a racehorse. I don't think it's technically an idiom. It's, no, I think uh, it's just an expression. It's a simile. All right. A metaphor. <laughs> it's a metaphor. <laughs> if you don't do your homework better, I'm going to fly off the handle. Where does that one come from? That one comes from the 1700s when manufacturing wasn't, uh, they didn't ha really have standards in making hand tools and ac specifically axes. And so sometimes when you would fly off the handle. swing your tool, it would fly off the that handle. That is dangerous. And become a dangerous situation. <laughs> yeah. That's super dangerous. <laughs> Cheesy, crazy. The one that you were trying to find and you couldn't find, skin. How does more than one way to skin a cat. Yeah. It's also, I think some people say more than one way to skin a rabbit. It's about skinning a fucking animal. Right. From what I could find is the majority of it comes from... Skinning catfish, basically, is what that would they, make it a southern expression. Which they so they're saying that there's more than one way to skin a catfish. It comes from hunters. So the thing that I, I researched found. about it said that the earliest written instance of it was like 1860 or 1830, <laughs> but then there was it added later on that there was a a Dutch law that had to create or the Dutch legislation or whatever that talked about whether or not sk they skinned cats alive or dead. That it's really hard to find the origin of that one. Yeah. I'm going to stick with it's catfish. <laughs> <laughs> There's more than one way to skin a catfish. Right. They just took fish off that and left it at that. I at one point looked up Barry the hatchet and I had it in here to look up. I didn't look it up like a, Dummy. Yeah, so you didn't do your homework? I did my homework. Do you want to see how many I have? Look at all this. Uh, That's one page, two page, three page, and a half. Look at that. It's more than you got, isn't it? That is definitely more than I have. You had what? Two? I might have three. <laughs> oh, damn, I was off. <laughs> I was so close. So you got fly off the handle. You tried to get skin a cat. What's the other one? Do you know what the origin of white elephant is? No, but why has it got to be white? Because that's what it is. Why can't it be an orange elephant? So apparently it, it originated in Thailand where, I don't remember what the religion is down there, but elephants are considered sacred. And Makes sense. the <laughs> king or whatever he was, king, monarch, whatever he was at the time, 
when he was perturbed by you, he would gift you with a white elephant. Um, and because they're sacred, you can't neglect them you or can't refuse them or refuse them or try to get rid of them. <clears throat> and so it would become a burden on the family that was gift. It was gifted because you have to take care of them. Elephants eat a lot. They drink a lot. Wow. Yeah. Was the elephant actually white? Cause I know uh, it was, yeah, it was white. I don't know how you find so many white elephants. Maybe it's... yeah, maybe they maybe there are a plethora <laughs> albino, in albino Taiwan. Elephants. You said yeah. Taiwan. Yeah, the Thailand. Maybe. Oh, maybe there's a plethora in Thailand. Who knows? Yeah. I don't know that many Thai elephants, so I couldn't tell you. Yeah. I've never been to Thailand. Never been to Thailand. Messing with your camera. Well, what's one of yours? I've been talking this whole time. <laughs> right, sure you have. <laughs> by the skin, of, by the skin of your teeth. There's no skin on your teeth. They, it comes from apparently the Bible, the book of Job. They think it refers to basically because all of his, he had like blisters and shit all over his skin. The only skin that he didn't have that was blistered was his gums. So they refer to that as the skin of your teeth. So that's where that comes from. The Bible. But what is, but what is it? What is the skin of your teeth reference? It's like just barely escaping something. Yeah, just so barely. He barely escaped having blisters barely all over. Get, yeah. <laughs> I mean, no, he did. I mean, he did have blisters all over his body. He Except didn't for have his them. Gums, he so didn't he have them on his escaped. mouth. Yeah. <laughs> he almost had ulcers on his face. Yeah. In his mouth, whatever. In his mouth. In his mouth. Beat around the bush. This is one that I don't do a lot. I never. Hardly ever beat isn't around that, the bush that to try to find to try to scurry out whatever's hid, hiding in the bush. It oh, those are yeah, bothering wanna, you. I want to offer a promo. Oh, I hate those. They want to boost our viewership. They think we're so great. They want to boost our yeah, viewership. They're probably the only one. The only one watching. They ain't even watching. It's just an advertisement. <laughs> they just popped in to put in their right. propaganda and then left. So beat around the bush. It basically comes from when. People, you know, go around all sorts of ways to say something or do something and not actually just do it. So it's a way of avoiding, but it comes from medieval times when they would beat the bushes to get the birds out. And so the dogs could, so the hunters could get them. I guess the dogs wouldn't get them, but the hunters would uh, beat around the bush. What's the next one you got? The next one I got is break a leg, which... As everyone knows, most people use it as good luck. Unless you're just specifically as a thespian. Yeah. I'm not a thespian. <laughs> yeah, especially as a thespian to break a leg and it count it comes from everybody wanting to say good luck. I said that um, word to somebody that recently, thespian, and uh <laughs> they acted like they'd never heard it before. Really? Like, yeah. I That's weird. Was a, is that like was... is that like you're a musician? I'm not a musician. Yeah, I, do a music. Music. I do music. Yeah. <laughs> I do music. Do music. It was common nomenclature. <laughs> a person that what do you, what else would you call a person that is in the theater? An actor. The theater. Or an actress. I, a the, the, I, theatress. I, they like to separate actual actors and actresses from theater actress and act, actors and right. actresses. So they call them thespians. Theater spin. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> it was used in horse racing in 1921 because they thought it was unlucky to say good luck. So they would say break a leg. And then they think it comes from a German translation of a Yiddish word wishing of success and i would not be able to pronounce the yiddish word so i didn't even try and write it down to know what the german translation word would be because i couldn't i can't speak yiddish nor german right so so if you want to know that look that up yourself because i'm not going to butcher two languages trying to figure out what it is right so going back to thespians right so in the (laughs) 1700s a guy named john dennis invented a uh, device to make the sound of thunder for plays for the theater for a theatrice it didn't really catch on for whatever reason he went and saw a show sometime later and someone was using his his machine to make the sound of thunder and that's where the term stealing your thunder comes from oh because somebody stole his thunder machine 
Well, that's so some sad. Some thespian, some dirty thespian stole his <laughs> Dirty thespian. <laughs> well, I guess they've caught red-handed as one as well. And that comes from when you get caught doing thieving stuff when you're not supposed to be thieving stuff. But it comes from 1432 Scotland to be convicted. This actually wasn't, well, I guess it was thieving, but to be caught butchering an animal that wasn't your own. The blood on your hands made is what they said you were caught red-handed because you were butchering the, the animal you stole, you thieved. You thieved it. Thieved it. So now it just stands for thievery. At the turn of the century, they used to give out different prizes for carnivals when you'd go and do their little carnival games, like throw throw the ring, ring toss, or whatever. For little games they play it in the midway at the carnival. Nowadays they give like stuffed animals and stuff, right? But apparently they were, in the old days they used to give out various items, and one of the items that they would give out is a cigar. If you were playing some of these midway games and didn't quite win, you were close, but you get no cigar. Oh, close but no cigar. <laughs> close but no cigar. By the 1930s, the phrase it says that the phrase had extended beyond the fairgrounds to be used in in normal nomenclature, in normal verbiage. Gotcha. Hmm. What about, so would that make a uh, winner, winner, chicken dinner? <laughs> when, did they, inter- when did they give out chicken dinners? <laughs> is, is that an idiom as well? <laughs> and is that more recent? Where does that come from? I think from? that came from rhythmic American poetry. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> so instead of, Close but no cigar, you get a chicken dinner right. if you win. You remember in the in the eighties there was this that uh rapper um used to rap with NWA, but he had his own album called his he was go went by the DOC. Anyway, so he uh would I remember listening to his album back then. Uh The Whirlwind Pyramid of No. Only you can't remember who he is. His name is Terrell something. I don't remember what his full name is. Um, but he said rhythmic American, calling rap rhythmic American poetry. Oh, I can see that. Yeah. So do you know where under the weather comes from? No. Do you know what it means? It means that you're sick. You were under the weather a few a week, week or so ago? Yeah. I think a lot of people have been under the weather this year. So it comes from sailors. Whenever they have a storm, when there's violent weather, they all go <clears throat> below deck, and or when they're or when they're seasick or whatever. So when they get sick, they go below deck. So then they're said to be under the weather. So that was a maritime. It was a maritime. The age of exploration, age of sail. So I got another one for you. It comes from the age of sail. Chew the fat. What does chew the fat mean? Chew the fat. It's when you're considering something. Yeah, I I know. I understand it as. When you're just sitting there talking to each other, bull- bullshitting. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know who, which way of understanding it is correct, but the, <laughs> I've I've heard it both ways. But it also comes from mar- the maritime age, the age of sail, because when you're spending months and months at sea, you know, you can't get fresh food, so you have to get food that doesn't spoil. And they used to have salted a fat that was stored in salt, and it nobody really liked it. Nobody, <laughs> That's the same. Uh, it was chewy, it was hard to eat. And they didn't have pork rinds back they, then. Yeah. And they bitched about it when they had to eat it because that was all the food that was left. They would go through the other food first and leave that for Because nobody wants to eat it. Yeah, nobody wants to eat it. Yeah. And so the expression chew the fat comes They're from. They're like, maybe by the time we get there, yeah. we won't have to eat the fat. <laughs> they should uh, They should have learned to do pork rinds with fat, right? They just fry well, how long it. I don't it, know how yeah. you do pork, pork rinds. You just deep deep fry fat or skin. So usually chicharrones is uh, is the skin of the pork. It's pork skin. Oh, why does it look like fat? I guess because it's fried at a high temperature and it becomes cellular like that. Or I guess it right. just gets puffy. Right. There's not any room for the air to go, so it just makes puffy cells. Oh, so piece of cake. Do you know where piece of cake? What does piece of cake mean? Uh, Marie Ant- Marie Antoinette. That's let the meat cake. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Although apparently there's no like record of her actually saying let them eat cake. 
We do have a record of let them eat cereal. Did you eat see that the Kellogg's? For... That's what per... I'm talking about. Yeah. yeah. So stupid. Not only not only fuck you, but fuck that guy. Yeah. <laughs> cereal. So piece of cake is when something is easy. It's going to be a piece of cake. It comes from plantation slavery events. They were mocking uh, dances and walks uh, to jab at their masters, their people. Hmm. The walks, habits, and their employers, I guess. Employer and, oh, and other townsfolk. So that's they would have a cake walk and make fun of them. So now it's called a piece of cake. <laughs> they were making fun of the crackers. Yeah, making fun of the crackers. <laughs> Anything to make fun of an asshole that's keeping you doing right. things against your will. Right. And the towns, the townspeople not doing anything about it. Once in a blue moon. I thought I what? had that one. I don't think I did that one. Go ahead. What's once? In Do you a know blue what moon? it means? Uh, every once in a while. Yeah. I see you every. Once not in often. A while. Yeah, so apparently it's a real astronomical phenomenon, referring to the second full moon in the same month, which is a rare occurrence. I didn't know that. I didn't. I thought it was trying to say that the moon was actually blue, which I've never seen a blue. I've seen a hunter's moon or a blood moon, but never a blue moon. Yeah, I would like to see a blue moon. But it's the second full moon in the same calendar month. Oh, so not actually blue. Right. Just rare. (laughs) This one should be easy. Barking up the wrong tree. That's for like, well, I know what it means, but I lost my train of thought. <laughs> so what does it mean? Oh, well, it's not really a term of aggression. It's uh, whenever somebody's accusing you or some, of something or whatever, and you're barking up the wrong tree, like you're... you're yeah. So yeah. you have, whatever you're saying, you have it wrong. Right. You're incorrect. So it comes from hunting when dogs would bark literally bark up the wrong tree where and the prey trap was an, and tra- trap an animal up a tree only they were up the wrong they were barking up the wrong tree because the animal didn't go up that tree right but in Shaun of the dead they said that dogs can't look up what the hell does that even mean <laughs> i don't know it just made me think of it because the dog would be looking up the tree right you know? <laughs> well yeah they like <laughs> jump up the tree and bark uh, up it. it just made me think of Shaun of the dead <laughs> you got red on you <laughs> Shaun of the Dead is funny. Spilled beans. What about them? Come clean. Yeah. It comes from ancient Greek voting system. They had white beans for yes and brown beans for no. So would that so also they... be the origin for bean counter? <laughs> I don't know. Maybe. <laughs> so they literally had to pour beans out to see if it was a yes or no vote. I guess that's where but bean counter comes from. Uh, that's, I'll, I'll, I'll go with it. Yeah. yeah. It sounds like to give someone a cold shoulder. To ignore them. Yeah. Not talk to them. Entomologists think that the phrase originated from medieval etiquette. After a feast, the host of England would subtly signal that the meal was over and it's time for the guest to leave by sell- serving a cold slice of pork, mutton, or beef shoulder. Interesting. Yeah. I would have never. Why would, yeah. What is mutton? Mutton is lamb. Oh, I think I knew that at some point. Yeah. <laughs> I think I know it and then forget it and then know it and then forget it. That's that thing. It's a vicious cycle. Butter someone up. I'm going to butter you up. That's weird. <laughs> <laughs> to butter someone up means to try and talk sweetly to sweet. Them. Sweet talk them. Trying to persuade them hey, to do hey. something for you. Shimon. Shimon. <laughs> Shimon Lee. Shimon. So it comes from ancient <laughs> India where there's a custom. There was a custom. I don't know if it's still a custom. It could be. Who knows? Ancient India where they threw balls of ghee at statues of their gods to because to win favor. To try to gain favor. To gain favor or forgiveness. It's also a tradition in Tibet by the Tang Dynasty. They made butter sculptures for the new year for peace and happiness. So this one doesn't really say where it comes from, but blood is thicker than water. It's part of an actual phrase that... Yeah, the whole, uh, the whole phrase. Everybody That actually yeah. does not mean what everybody thinks it means. But it doesn't say where it actually comes from. 
And it says the full maxim is the blood of the covenant is thicker than the water of the womb, referring to. So we we take it as the blood is thicker than water. That yeah. family is comes before everything. Yeah, family is you're all right. over friends. But the and actual expression is the blood means the opposite. Your friends are the people are, you choose to be around are right. more so are more to you than your family. Cat got your tongue. I've been talking this whole time. <laughs> Cat got your tongue has possibly two origins. The first one is going to be. They don't know if it's from back in the olden days when they used the cat of nine tails. Mm-hmm. When you got smacked by that thing, it hurt like a bitch. People wouldn't talk. They probably wouldn't be able to scream. Like it's probably one of those pains that. Would that know. be during the Inquisition? Uh, it, I don't know. It just says medieval times during liar. It, they did it to liars and blasphemers. <laughs> they smacked them with the cat of nine tails. I wouldn't want to be hit with that thing. Right. <laughs> the no. the other is possibly ancient Egypt, where they would cut off the tongues of liars and feed them to the cats because cats were considered gods. So it was an offering to the gods to give them a liar's tongue, which is disgusting. But teach their own. Hmm. I don't think I'd feed. Who my was cat the a in, a, in in ancient Egypt? Who was the cat god? Because Horus um, was a hawk. It was. Anubis was a, is Anubis a wolf? I think it's a jackal. Be. It's right on the Bastet? tip of my tongue. It might be Bastet. Yeah, I don't remember. I don't either. Could be, could be Bastet. <clears throat> one of my, one of my favorite, I always named my creatures in games. I would name them Bast or, you know, other, other names like that. Turn a blind eye. Is that anything? Is that similar to turn a blind cheek or turn the other cheek? Turn the other cheek. Well, turn the other cheek is supposed to be in the Bible from Jesus. Was that if you're somebody strikes you, well, you were supposed to turn the other cheek. In other words, not retaliate. But so to turn a blind eye is very similar. Yeah. No. I mean, turn a blind eye would be to me. Yeah, you, to ignore you, it. You, to yeah. ignore it, you're not gonna. Right. So that comes from the Battle of Copenhagen when Admiral uh, Sir Hyde Parker signaled to Admiral Horatio Nelson to stop attacking the Danish ships. Uh, Nelson raised the scope to his blind eye so he didn't see the signal. <laughs> <laughs> and he continued to attack the ships. <laughs> Parker was disgraced. So Parker was disgraced, and the admiral that turned the blind eye became commander in chief. <laughs> <laughs> so that's where that comes from. It makes me like that saying a little more. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Turn a blind eye. Yeah, stick it up to your stick the, par- the telescope up to your blind eye. <laughs> that's pretty fun. That is good. I like it. Uh, did we do what goes around comes around? You did not do what goes around comes around. Do you have another one? I have. I can't do. You can't do something to save your life. You know what it means. That I can't get. I can't do this suck. to save my life or whatever. <laughs> yeah, that, well, yeah. Uh, to me, it's just you're. I liken it to having a good run of bad luck. Like, yeah, I just can't get it to go my way. Yeah. Apparently, In gaming it happens whenever we just die incessantly right. and can't get to where we're going. So the expression that supposedly was first used in 1884 in Kelly and O'Kelly's writing, if it was to save my life and theirs, I can't get up and small talk for their rector and his curate. What are, who are they? <laughs> right. <laughs> Kelly and O'Kelly's writing. So what goes around comes around is from what I found, nobody actually knows where it comes from. They think it started in a prison in the 70s as an alternative to repo what you sow. Because those are both the same thing anyway. Right. So who knows? Reap what you sow. Reap what you sow. What about Mad as a Hatter? That comes from Alice in Wonderland, I'm I'm betting. It actually has origins in truth and like actual. So back when they were making the when hats were handmade, right? Which some yeah. of them, yeah. The so good they ones would are. use 
mercury to treat or to treat the fabric or the leather, or whatever they're making the hat out of. And they didn't understand that mercury was poisonous and hatters would become matter and matter over time because they were getting mercury poisoning from mm-hmm. using mercury all the time to make people's hats. And so then you get the expression mad as a hatter. So I saw a thing the other day because whenever we first decided we were going to do this, right? I had mentioned that rule of thumb, everybody knows where that comes from. <laughs> and That you can't be, beat your wife with a stick wider than your thumb. Than her thumb or your thumb, somebody's yeah. thumb. Yeah. But apparently that's not where it comes from. Yeah. It comes from clothes makers. I don't know, designers and whatnot. They used to measure by thumb and that was their rule of thumb really yeah had no idea i thought it was Hmm. steeped in domestic violence but it is not (laughs) 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 so i feel better about using it i use it all the time well just because you use an expression or an idiom doesn't mean you're condoning <laughs> doesn't mean you condone where it comes domestic from. violence <laughs> yeah like cat got your tongue i right. condone i don't condone cutting out people's tongues and feeding with their, it to like, a cat yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well you don't condone that well so i said uh, the idioms episode that is idioms thank you for joining us in our idiomcy i'm uh, sorry idi- idiocy <laughs> You're a dummy. <laughs> We're Faley on and Binks of the Blue Lounge Podcast. That's our show, and thank you for spending time with us. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Follow us on TikTok, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Until next time.